What we see in the mirror is not always what the world sees. I mean, you can see my acne here and here. Having clear skin is so important to the way we view ourselves. And I just like literally have all these spots all the time and it's so annoying. 85% of young people get spots. There's a lot of people out there whose lives are changed by acne. I know it changed my life a lot, so yeah, it should be taken seriously, very seriously. Good morning. Am I your alarm clock? This is Gemma Kearney. BBC. Radio. One. I'm Gemma Kearney. Like most teenagers, I had a few spots, and it did used to get me down. Luckily, mine were never that bad. But for some young people, the psychological effects of having acne can be as bad, if not worse, as the actual spots themselves. I was never depressed before, and then suddenly I'm like crying and feeling really angry. In this film, I'm gonna meet people all over Britain who are fighting their own war on acne. It's not just a few spots, it's like an all day constant reminder that you're not happy with yourself and you're not happy with the way you look. And meet the doctors who are helping them do it. I'm making this film with Derek Jones, the director. His son Jesse developed bad acne as a teenager. It was never all over acne, was it? No. It was all that no. covers your face. It was, if you got one, it was quite a nasty one. Jesse's acne was so severe he was prescribed a last resort drug for it. And I thought, oh, why are you taking medication? Your skin looks fine. The medication, he said, may have started to make him feel a bit different. After sinking into a deep depression, Jesse went missing. This is the story of what happened to him. We had the knock at the door that every parent dreads. Box Festival in the East End of London. Armed with photographs of bad acne. I want to find out just how big a problem skin is for young people and to what lengths they will go to to get rid of zits. Please meet gentlemen and lady. Have you got a spare second? No. Okay, so I'm doing a documentary about acne, right. skin, etc. Yeah. Is it anything that's, is, you know, is it something that's bothered you ever in the past? Recently, yeah, not when I was younger. Oh, really? So it's something that's come later? Like, how old are you? 22. So you're not exactly, it's not later in life, but well, it wasn't in your teens? Nah. So what, what's it made you feel? Shit. Really? Yeah. Is skin and acne and spots something that you guys think about ever? <laughs> We yeah. had this massive discussion <laughs> before we came because I have I've had a breakout recently Same and I was like, well. oh, but no, but I don't know, you just deal with it. Don't does it you? get you down? It does me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do I... What do you think about acne? I think it's unfortunate, but it, it's kind of part of part of growing up, isn't it? I suppose, but I'd back acne for a stage. What really? So like on, Li on your little back? bit of yeah, acne. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and but... how did it make you feel? Uh, pretty, pretty rubbish at the time, but then most people, fingers crossed, kind of get through it. So you just grew out of it? I grew out. You been around? Oh no, this is... And now it's all smooth. It all right? It's lovely. Uh, what do you think of when I show you these pictures? Quite severe. Yeah, yeah that is quite bad. If your skin was like that, would you do anything to get... Yeah, yeah. I would do everything. I know a man who feels his empty. This is 15-year-old Will. I don't, mind, I don't mind the cafe down there. He has severe acne that he says affects his whole life. I had loads of blood on the back of my shirt from where one of the spots had popped. It had gone all over my shirt, which is pretty painful. That's probably the worst bit about having shoulder spots. It's just the pain of putting a bag over your shoulders. It's horrible. Go on in and go. Will lives in Selby in Yorkshire. His skin has affected his relationship with schoolmates. <laughs> used to walk around school with head down and stuff. I didn't say a word or anything. Just quiet. We used to bully him a little bit. <laughs> so we wasn't friends oh, at the time. I shouldn't laugh at that, shouldn't <laughs> Yeah, we wasn't the best of friends at the time. A little bit of banter with lads. Just like, it wasn't that bad, was it? No. <laughs> 
but like noticed him like, it affected him a little bit so I stopped. So I'm on my way to meet Will, he lives in Selby. I'm really looking forward to finding out a little bit more about his life. Um, I know that he suffers from acne quite badly and it has affected him quite a lot. It's a long journey to Yorkshire, so I've got time to tweet about spots. So I put out on my Twitter feed uh, asking whether anyone suffers from acne or has done before and how it makes them feel. And um, it just makes it really real to speak to people that are going through it right now. This girl's got back to me and she says it makes you feel like everyone is constantly staring at you and judging you. It's hard to look at people in the eye. Someone else uh, has started to get it in their 20s and is really shocked because they didn't have it as a teenager. It's really sad. So what lotions and potions have you got on you? Um, start out with this. Mm -hmm. Just a face wash for men, never works. So. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just something different, it's just like an exfoliating scrub. Mm -hmm. Leave on for 10 minutes, just, it's quite good stuff actually, it's quite mm -hmm. nice. Gentle, clean and clear, everyone's used that. Yeah, I used to use that. Yep. And then just like a cloth, exfoliating cloth, which is handy if you like, you don't have enough time to put them on like a, a chemical yeah. exfoliant because it take a while. Right. You're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's getting them on my back, really big ones on my shoulders, down my back, and then like more on my cheeks as well, like bigger. I wouldn't call them cysts because they're not that, they're not as big as that, mm. but they are fairly big and like there's a lot of them. And what's the hardest uh, situation? I don't know. It's just like talking to people like face to face like this. Like a few months ago, I wouldn't look people in the eye. I just like sort of just look around or just not look at them and or just try not to like talk to people. And what do you think to the attitude that? Oh, spots is just a teenage thing. It's something that will pass. Don't need to worry about it. You're just being a bit angsty because you're you're still a kid. There's a lot, there's a lot of people out there whose lives are changed by uh, acne. I know it changed my life a lot, so yeah, it should be taken seriously, very seriously. Will's mum Serena takes his acne very seriously. Happy birthday. His skin was just like white, scaly. And that's what it was, it was the sheer desperation for, in William's life for him to improve his skin. And that's what really upset, upset me the most. Mm. Because acne is so common, you expect the treatments to be successful. So you put the effort in and William did. And we just didn't see any change and then they got really bad. And then I noticed that he wouldn't look me in the eye. One morning I was going to work and I was talking to him and he was looking down. And I went to work and I was a little bit upset. I thought that's it. That's enough. Obviously I'd like William not to have to get up in the morning and think what am I going to have today in the mirror to deal with. Because I personally have dealt with bad skin nearly all my life. So I know what it's like, it knocks your confidence, you don't want to go out. She says she can retrain skin. After two years of unsuccessful treatments, Serena's going to pay for Will to be treated privately in London's Harley Street. It was quite clear that Will has reached points before that have been particularly hard. So hard that his mum would clearly notice and was really worried about him. The idea that someone didn't want to look at anyone in the face, that his physicality changed, that he would look down and he couldn't meet anyone in the eye, is really kind of sad because he's such a confident guy. He's really sparky, he's really bright, he's really fun. And I would have hated to, to imagine the idea of him being really closed off to chatting and, and being the way that he was when we met him. It definitely affected his state of mind. And he even said the words, it changed my life, which is a serious, serious thing to say for a 15-year-old boy. Now I'm in the bathroom and it goes, twist the camera. Will has agreed to keep a video diary of his progress whilst on the treatment. Will is getting private treatment but I want to find out what treatments are available on the NHS. I'm meeting GP Dr. Rada Modgill. What is classed as acne? Acne is when you get lots and lots of spots, but particularly kind of different types of spots. So 
the pore, which is a little hole which lets the skin breathe, often gets blocked. You can get blackheads, whiteheads from that. Um, but it's when you start getting sebum being blocked underneath the skin that you get a bacteria multiplying and becoming more in number. And that's when you get acne, which is full of pustules and cysts and really painful spots. For milder forms of acne, there are lots of topical things we can use. And by that, I mean creams or ointments that you just put on the skin. Okay, and then what's the kind of, what's next after that? So there are, there are about two or three different classes of antibiotic. Um, you would start off with one which would give hopefully less, the least side effects, maybe one a day for ease of taking. After that, there is a different, you would try a different class of antibiotic that might target slightly different bacteria. Mm -hmm. But if these don't work, there is a stronger treatment available on the NHS. The controversial drug Roaccutane can only be prescribed by a specialist dermatologist. For the right people who've got very severe acne, Roaccutane is very effective and it has very, very good results. So if you're the right candidate for it, if you've got very severe acne and if you see a specialist in the hospital, a dermatologist, who thinks it could help you, then people come out saying that it has very, very good effects and very good results. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that should be the very final end point of anybody's journey along acne. You know, there are about 15, 16 steps between when it starts and when you go to Roaccutane and you have a lot of side effects. It's not a treatment to be started lightly. Um, you know, all sorts of monitoring of blood tests. Um, you have to be careful you don't get pregnant. Risks of um, suicidal thoughts and mood disturbances. And particularly when you're young, you're in your teenage years, you've got loads of things going on anyway. Mm. You've got lots of mood changes. And I think, you know, for, for me personally as a GP, I think that should be the very last resort. Twenty-four-year-old Jesse Jones was prescribed Roaccutane as a last resort. He'd had bad acne since he was a teenager. I've travelled to Swanage in Dorset to find out about Jesse from his family and friends. I'd like to know what Jesse was like as a teenager. He was very active, always um, drawing. Lots of um, cartoon figures, he loved drawing cartoon figures. In fact, um, he used to have a go at making his own little animation films. And he was never still, he was always busy doing something. What was that, was that for me? No, it was for me. Laura? What are you drinking? 22-year-old Laura is Jessie's sister. So, Laura, firstly tell me about what Jessie was like as a brother. Yeah, we just used to, like, joke around or, like, uh, <laughs> make fun of my mum and dad or... <laughs> um, like, just, like, talk about, like, clothes and stuff because it was really fashionable, so I'd always, like, come downstairs and be like, oh, Jessie, I've bought these new, like, shoes or whatever, and we'd, like, talk about that or... Just like, he was just really funny as well, so he'd always just make me laugh and things. He was, yeah, he was a very happy, active teenager, but then he got acne, quite bad acne. And what did you think about it? Well, I just thought it was, you know, like, all teenagers get acne, really. So I just thought it was, I didn't think it was that big a, bigger thing, really, until I heard about it later on. So how bad was it? What did it look like? Exactly. Mm. It, it was... It used to get one or two it really big cystic ones. cystic acne. Yeah. Behind his ears, sometimes on his mm. forehead. And he had a lot on his back and, and chest yeah. and as well. and on his chin he used to get them as well. He used to get them. But they, he was never all over acne, was it? it no. It sort of no. covers your face. It was... If you got one, it was quite a nasty one. We actually thought it was a phase, and that, you know, like all teenagers, he'd grow out of it. I think a few comments may have been made by other teenagers about skin. Yeah, he was called Pizza Face, wasn't he? Yeah, by something someone. Like that, yeah. yeah, he was sensitive lad. That really, that he, really he upset him. He was overly him. sensitive. I think he, you know, took everything to heart.
the acne was making him depressed, you know. And obviously that upset us as well. And eventually when, you know, nothing seemed to move it, he went back to the doctor who then referred him to a dermatologist. And what the dermatologist recommended to Jesse was, was the, the drug Roaccutane. In the summer of 2009, Derek and Patsy didn't know their 24-year-old son, Jesse, was taking Roaccutane or about its possible side effects. It was during this time he started dating a young woman from Slovenia called Anna Gajorkos. We met in Dorset and Swanage, where Jesse's from. Uh, we met working together. So, yeah, it was quite a nice uh, love story. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had like a whole summer together hanging out with friends and then by the end of the summer, you know, there was something more and yeah, it was, um, he was all very, really impressed me and um, there was this instant connection. <laughs> <laughs> always good. Yeah, always good, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess it was the sense of humour and also the talent. He was a really talented musician and for a long time I didn't really know about his talent and it was only like a month or two after I've met him that I saw this video and I, that he's made and I was wow this is this is incredible Somebody asked me if I love that girl you better believe it you better believe it Actually he started taking the second treatment when we met mm -hmm. so of the medication he was on mm -hmm. um, and I thought oh why are you taking medication your skin looks fine I saw that girl and I can't get away no. I only found out about like the drug and its side effects later on, like when we were in a relationship for you know, almost six months that, you know, this kind of started popping up and he started researching it. At the beginning, I just, you know, I just kind of knew what common sense told me. This is some really strong medication and it seems a bit odd that you're taking it for something I can't actually really see, but. Yeah, when did you start noticing some changes in his character? I think it was about three, four months maybe into the relationship and you know you could see he was maybe his confidence was getting a bit lower and I think the medication he said may started to make him feel a bit different so when he was back on it and I think that sparked him to do some research and when he did the research I think he got really wor worried about it and that kind of consumed him. After starting on the drug in the summer of 2009 Jesse told his dermatologist in September of that year that he wanted to come off it because of mood swings. Researching online, he'd found out a lot about the possible side effects which can include a whole range from dry skin and lips to depression and suicidal thoughts. I've gone online to see what other people are saying about Roaccutane. I have got a lot of fucking side effects because of this drug and the bastards that made it. But it is pretty bad. Um, so I'm hoping that after the six months of Accutane, I will be spot free. It's really interesting just typing Accutane into the search engine of YouTube because there are so many videos about it. So many people, you know, feeling quite strongly for and against. There's loads of comments. It's, it's almost like a war uh, about a drug which I've never really heard of before, and I think that's really interesting. And the thing that I want to say is, yeah, it cleared up my acne, it did that job, but it's such a dangerous drug, and some people just seem to get lucky. This is 22-year-old Stefan. He's looking for a job in accountancy. Hi, it's Stefan here. Come on up, Stefan. Cheers. He's also a passionate anti Roaccutane video blogger. Today, he's got an interview but he hasn't been able to hold down a job for long in the past. Like when I handed in my notice actually, that's when it was getting quite stressful and then after that period I kind of picked it up a bit more. Yeah. I've come to Stefan's hometown of Norwich to meet him. Hi, Stefan. Hey, nice to meet you. Gemma, nice Hello to meet you. There. I know he's got a lot to say about Roaccutane. Yeah, and when did you start taking that? Um, it was December 2005 and I I was scheduled to take it for six months and then I stopped taking it a month early because I was really struggling with it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I came off it in May 2006. In terms of clearing up the acne, Accutane did its job there. 
Mm -hmm. So when you say that you started struggling, which is why you took yourself off it, what yeah. do you mean? Mainly the struggle there was I, I had a few physical side effects, but the mental one was really bad because I'd never had any form of depression or anything like that. And suddenly it was crazy. I didn't feel like myself. I was really angry and short tempered with people. And uh, it kind of took me over and it was scaring me and I was feeling quite suicidal at that point. So I figured... Stefan told me he still now, feels depressed really months, seven yeah, years after stopping taking Roaccutane. So he also believes the drug day, is causing another day, side effect, sexual dysfunction. So that plays so many parts again because that's going to affect my self-esteem more than acne probably did. Right. Any other guy, and I know because I used to be one, I'd wake up in the morning and it's just like, hello, mm. <laughs> and watching a film, ooh, yeah. Well, looking at a girl and you just get those feelings like I'm yeah. dead inside now, I can't feel anything. And of course, if I get another girlfriend now, I, I have to tell them, oh, by the way, it doesn't work properly. Like Stefan, Jesse believed he was experiencing serious side effects many months after he'd stopped taking Roaccutane. Day after day, I'm more confused. By March 2010, Jesse's state of mind had rapidly deteriorated and so had his relationship with Anna. For me, I think the harshest thing was about not being able to plan the future, really. You know, you always want to make some kind of plans and with him it was just impossible because he... He would say, oh, I say, oh, well, well, we'll get over this and, you know, it will be OK. Well, I don't think it's going to be OK. You know, there's people saying that this is a lifelong condition and they're, you know, affected by it forever. Mm. When you're with someone who takes up quite a lot of your mental energy and takes up a lot of that emotional energy, you need to go somewhere as well and relate to someone and tell them, you know, what you're going through. Um, but obviously that wasn't the case, so I guess breaking up in that sense was a bit of a relief. One of the things that keeps coming up and yeah. kind of came up with Jesse's story, who I'm finding out about as well, mm -hmm. is this sense of eternal gloom. Yes. And that you will never get better. Totally, yeah. Which is quite a unique type of depression. Yeah, I mean... I, I find that in itself interesting and very worrying yeah. that you feel, age 22, mm. that all of these things are happening to you, which are really, really horrible, yeah. aren't going to be able to change. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the reasons I wanted to do this show was really like the awareness needs to be raised, because whenever anyone hears of Accutane, if they've heard of it at all, they're like, oh, depression and birth defects, but there's so much more to it to that. I'm pretty certain, like 100% sure, that they don't list erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction on the label. I don't know what to think. Stefan is a handsome, talented guy, but he's obsessed about the harm he thinks the drug does. There's no documented evidence to prove Roaccutane causes long-term side effects like depression and sexual dysfunction, but it's clear that's what Stefan believes. By the end of 2010, 24-year-old Jesse was seeing a psychiatrist and had been prescribed antidepressants. But on the 20th of February 2011, after a night out with friends, he went missing. When you found out he was missing, well, what went what what went through your mind? Um, well, I suppose I just thought he was. When my mum first called me, I just thought he was <laughs> really drunk or something, or just like because he did like going out and stuff. So I thought he was just staying at a friend's or something, and just didn't have like mobile signal or something, couldn't ring. Or he was just really hungover or something like that. Yeah. That's what I thought when I first heard. Jesse left home at 10 o'clock on Saturday night. By 5.30 Sunday evening, Derek and Patsy were becoming extremely worried. Good afternoon, Dorset Police Inquiry. How can I help you? Our son went out last night 
Um, he's 24 years old and he, he, he does go out, but he, we, we haven't seen or heard from him since. Mm. And we're, we're getting a bit concerned. What's his name? His name is Jesse, J-E-S-S-E. All right, there's just a few um, more questions I need to ask. Don't panic okay. about these. It's just when anybody ever goes off, we need to sort of assess. Yeah, of course. Is he even um, likely to self-harm or commit suicide? He's been, he, he's been on medication. Okay, is that for, for depression, is it? Yeah. And uh, is, do you say this is out of character for him to not be in touch? And it's very out of character, well? no. yeah. All right, what I'm going to do, I'll get his two description broadcast. We'll have a quick ring round and make sure that um, he's not been taken into any of the hospitals. Okay, thank you very much. And within, what, half an hour, there were police officers round right at our here, door. Yeah. A full-scale land and sea search was mounted by the police, but also involved the lifeboat and coast guard, plus hundreds of local volunteers went looking for Jesse. Jesse's friends, Nathan and Lee, joined the search. I work, and then I come home from work, and I go out walking and looking in various different places. And mm. There was lots of people would phone me up that I didn't even know who they were, and like ask where they should search and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, came forward and yeah. were willing to help search. And I think the, the general attitude of certainly amongst you know all us lot was quite positive, really. We mm. were quite hopeful, you know, about the whole thing. Yeah, we were never. We were always happy when we were looking for him, like joking and stuff. It was yeah. never a depressing thing to do. We, he did have a, you know, a massive issue with the acne, definitely. Yeah, he was. He was definitely underconfident as a person. Like, even though I don't know, he was. He was never outgoing. I don't think, particularly yeah. not. I don't know. It's a bit. Wasn't the sort of the loudest person at the yeah, party or anything yeah. like right. that. Because you say that he did have a big problem with the acne, did he ever share anything with you about that? He he said to me when we were out one night, you know, that he he did it was making him depressed, which um, you know, for him to sort of talk about things like that was quite significant, I suppose, because it, you know he didn't often sort of voice that you know that sort of thing. The internet was playing a big part in the search for Jesse. His friend Darren masterminded a Twitter campaign a few days after he was reported missing. So I know that you were behind a big Twitter campaign. How did that start? Um, I, was, I was at home ill and uh, all my other mates were out looking. I just felt I needed to do something. So I uh, seen that other celebrities had retweeted other causes. So I thought, you know, this is a good cause. Try and get them to re retweet this as well. Yeah. What kind of things do you write to grab people's attention? Um, basically, I'd say, uh, my friend has gone missing, could you help uh, a retweet and, you know, just drum up awareness and I, I think it was a link to the, uh, the actual article on the Echo website we used mm -hmm. and then we used the hashtag find Jesse as well so that if enough people done it, it would go up the trend list as well. So who, who did you manage to get? Um, I think we had Stephen Fry, Jonathan Ross, Alan Carr, they're the big names. Good on you, it's pretty <laughs> amazing. Yeah. This is the East Bar in Swanage. CCTV footage outside captured Jesse with his friends on the night he went missing. I've come to meet Sophie. She was with Jesse on the footage and was one of the last people to see him. He was on really good form, like really, really good form. And on that evening when you were hanging out and having a nice time, in terms of his appearance, mm. He, his skin had cleared up and he looked really well and good, right? He looked really good. Actually, I remember telling him that night how like, attractive he was looking. He got really embarrassed and sort of looked at the floor. He, you wouldn't have even known, like, you wouldn't have noticed. Um, he, just looked, he just looked really happy. I, I can't stress that enough. Happy birthday, Jesse. Thanks. So when he left, you weren't around, you were in the loo or something, right? I oh, know I'd gone to another bar place okay. um, and didn't realise he hadn't come with us. Okay. Um, and then I turned around and I was like, where's Jess gone, where's Jess gone? And um, someone said he'd gone home, so I texted him to say, you know, I can't believe you left, I didn't get to say goodbye. And he texted me back saying, oh, I'm really sorry, I thought you knew um, I had to go because I've got work tomorrow. That's it.
London's Harley Street. Will considered Roaccutane but discovered Stefan's blog on YouTube, which put him right off. Instead, his mum Serena has brought him down to London for his first treatment. So you're probably going to feel most of the um, treatment. Maybe it'll be like just mildly tingly, mm -hmm. might feel cold, it might feel warm. Nice. Just tell me how it feels all the way mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Suzanne runs a private skin clinic. She is a trained nurse and studied in America with the dermatologist who invented this treatment. For acne, what we're going to do is to destroy the bacteria that's in the skin. Yeah. We're going to bring out all the, um, the toxins out of your skin. And we're going to make a very clean environment for new skin cells to develop in. Suzanne uses a mix of chemicals and enzymes on Will's skin. He'll need many more treatments for it to work, and he'll also have to use the creams at home. A complete course costs £800. The next thing is that we will then, um, you know, stop the... well, all this clogging up that's going on in the skin and get a beautifully clean environment <clears throat> for the skin cells to thrive in. But we will get there for you, Will. We really will get there. I think we're actually ready now for you to sit up, if you don't mind. OK, thank you. OK, well, so we're just going to start taking this off now. This is fantastic. We are now seeing all the capillaries open up. See all this? This is fantastic. Wow, they are real, yeah. Real, real capillaries. Yeah, capillaries, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Suzanne believes the photo shows Will's blood vessels opening up, bringing oxygen and nutrients to the surface and washing away toxins that cause bacteria to develop. Uh, it was pretty good actually. It was, uh, it was quite difficult though. It was like halfway through, it really hurt. It was like really tight uh, the, when she put the enzymes on. But it was really like uh, relaxing and I got a bit of sleep as well. <laughs> A week later, back in Selby, how's Will getting on? Still getting spots, which is quite bad. Yeah, my chest is still very bad. Someone said to me, uh, oh, Will, why, why do you have spots? And they went, do you not eat fruit or something? What? Roaccutane cured Jesse's acne, but at what price? His family didn't even know he'd taken it or about the serious side effects associated with it. In February 2011, fears were growing for Jesse's safety. He had been missing for over 24 hours. The police checked all the CCTV cameras in the town centre. They found this grainy footage of him passing a fish and chip shop at 1.35 a.m. There are very few sightings of Jesse um, that, that night. The last sighting of him, actually the last positive sighting of him, was outside this fish and chip shop. He was caught on CCTV camera as he walked past the fish and chip shop and that, that was the last time he, he was ever seen. Mm -hmm. Two days after Jesse disappeared, the police were frustrated that there were no further sightings or leads to where he was. They decided to look at his computer and what they found shocked them. They found an unsent email. It was in his drafts, wasn't it? In his drafts box. An unsent email to us, to Patsy, Patsy and myself. And I'll, I'll just read a little bit. It yeah. goes, hello, mum and dad. I just wanted to say a few things via email about my condition because I can't seem to articulate much in person at the moment. My depressed state at the moment is nothing like I've ever experienced before. I just wanted to clarify this because I know I've had periods of being very quiet and very serious in the past, but this is different. Roaccutane seems to have changed the way my mind and body works in a big way. I can barely bring myself to type its name because I hate it so much. And alongside, alongside this email, they also found 
a suicide manual he downloaded from the internet. I mean, I thought I knew Jesse pretty well because mm. we used to talk an awful lot, but I feel I've let him down when I read that because I didn't know all what he put in that email, how he was feeling. I do feel I let him down. It must have been agonising for Derek and Patsy to read that email and discover just how down Jesse was feeling. The search was stepped up as the police were now really worried about Jesse's state of mind. I want to find out more about the drug Jesse was taking. Roaccutane can only be prescribed by a dermatologist, so I'm back in London to meet one. So I'm on my way to see Dr. Tony Chu, who's one of the leading dermatologists in the UK. He should be able to tell me more about Roaccutane and its possible side effects. Now, Roaccutane is a form of systemic vitamin A. It's a tablet you take. It was launched about 30, perhaps even 40 years ago, and it has totally revolutionised our treatment of acne. Effectively, isotretinoin is the chemical name for the drug. Right. Uh, in Britain, it's marketed as Roaccutane. In America, it's, uh, it's marketed as Accutane. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way it works is it reduces oil production by 90%, so it dries the skin out. Mm -hmm. It unblocks the pores because it's vitamin A, so it gets rid of those blocked pores. It kills the bacteria and reduces inflammation, so it hits acne at every point mm -hmm. of, of, on its development. The whole thing with Roaccutane is within four to six months, the patient will be clear of spots. What you can't be sure of is what sort of side effects they may get and also whether they will then remain clear of their spots. So it's almost a quick fix, it's an easy option. But there are some very nasty side effects, really very serious side effects that are rare. And I can't look at you and say, you'll get dry lips but you'll be fine, mm. or else you're going to feel like death warmed up, you're going to wish you'd never heard of the drug or else you're going to get severely depressed and try to commit suicide. Mm. You can't tell. Now, I can put my hand on my heart and say that in the thousand-odd patients I've treated with Roaccutane, I've never had a really bad side effect. And it's a low-energy pulse dye laser. So we use Dr. Chu does use Roaccutane, but he's also pioneered laser treatment for acne in the UK. Oh, that's essentially it. He believes it produces good results and gets rid of spots without nasty side effects. Inflammation in the skin. The beauty of it is that if you have a bit of scarring, it will induce new collagen as well, and so it will fill the scars, and that's why very useful if you've got a bit of scarring or even if you want your lines and wrinkles done, so patients can be totally cured. Private laser treatment costs between £120 and £300 a session and you may need several sessions. It's not widely available on the NHS because of the cost, but Roaccutane is, and a course costs about £140. For most people, it works well and clears up their skin. Hi, it's me again. Um, this is my second video diary um, of the time I've been on Accutane. This is actually my fourth week. This is 20-year-old Chloe. She's a big fan of Roaccutane, even though she experienced some side effects whilst taking it. So, you know, I've had the dry lips, but, you know, now I'm getting kind of open sores on them if I don't put enough Vaseline on. We contacted Chloe and she's agreed to meet me in London's Brick Lane. So I want to talk to you about Accutane and uh, your experience on it and why you took it. And not just about Accutane, but I want to speak to you about having acne and how it kind of affects your life. I first started getting spots when I was about 14. And um, I would say that 15, 16 were the worst years. It was mainly on my face, but it covered my cheeks, my forehead, everything. It was really bad, it was quite sore. I tried everything I could to get rid of it. They sort of gave me a last, sort of last resort option, which was Accutane. Mm -hmm. So I went to my dermatologist and they prescribed it to me. And ever since then, it's been really good. I mean, my skin has improved so much since I took it. So you're a big fan, I guess? Yeah, I am. Um, I would recommend it to people. I mean, I know, obviously, um, there are warnings about the sort of side effects you can get. And I had some quite bad ones. Like, I suffered a lot with dry lips, dry skin, um, a couple of nosebleeds, and some really bad back pain. And what about some of the stories that you hear against it? Let's say, 
you know, it can be a lot worse. Like, it's not worth the risk. Yeah, I mean, I hear a lot of um, people warning you about the risk of um, suicide and depression taking it. And um, my doctor actually spoke to me about it and said that they have to look at your past history and see if you're prone to sort of depression, if you have a family history of it. Um, but I think a lot of the time that depression comes from people who are already suffering with it because of their body image. Body image was exactly 22-year-old John's problem. He had a few spots on his back. You're watching me iron. <laughs> Shocking. I'm in Barnstable in Devon to meet John's parents. Oh yeah, he, he loved fun. He hasn't even got any spots on his back. This is a picture of his back. They can't. There's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody gave me this. Jonathan and Pam's son John started taking Roaccutane at the end of 2003. He was studying to be a doctor in Manchester. There's a lovely one of him covered in mud. I'm not sure. Why. Yeah, there you go. And they want to play football. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else in his life was pretty much perfect. He was loving medicine, he was almost qualified. Just a few more months to go. He was in the fifth year. He had a beautiful girlfriend, and they were crazy about each other. They were even talking about getting married. And the only thing that wasn't perfect in his life was that he had a few spots on his back, and he, he'd heard that right, Roaccutane was this wonder drug that could get rid of acne when other things couldn't. Um, so he actually made the mistake of going looking for it. And with his medical training, he must have known what that might have entailed, but felt kind of positive about the fact that it would get rid of the spots. Yeah, being such a positive person, he had read that there are about the possible side effects. Mm. But he obviously dismissed them as, oh, I'll be fine. When he was growing up, when he was a teenager, did he ever have down days? Would you say that never. depression was anything that never, riddled who he was? Never no. in his life. Traditionally, the best man's speech should last as long as it takes the groom to make love. So thank you and good night. <laughs> He spoke to his mum on the phone, he said he felt a bit cold when he was trying to sleep. Um, and we thought, a bit odd, so we told him to get a bit more bed in, so he did that, and he, and he said he still couldn't sleep. And then he mentioned to me that he couldn't concentrate on his work. I'm sure this is that medication that's doing this. I said, you must stop the medication. So he went on it on December the 12th, and he stopped it on January the 8th. He'd stopped it on a Thursday, mm -hmm. and he started, he mentioned first um, bad thoughts on the Sunday. Okay. I said, everything that you're feeling is being caused by this Roaccutane. He said, I, I just want to rest now. And he said, I'm going to the gym tomorrow and I'm doing this. And, and we had planned to travel up that night and it got so late and we decided to travel up early the next morning when I was more able, safe to drive. Um, but unfortunately, the next morning was too late. Um, he had taken his life, he'd hung himself in the bedroom. Jonathan believes the drug had a very specific effect on his son's mental state. <laughs> Roaccutane not only causes depression, but in the extreme it causes psychosis, or psychotic events, and it was obviously during one of these psychotic events that John took his life. We miss everything about him because he was just such a lovely lad, you know, and he would have achieved so much. I remember in a very humble way once he said, when he was just talking about being a medic, he said, uh, he said, I just want to make a difference. I want to make a difference, he said. He's made a difference, but most of it has been after he died, but they can't just go on and on. You know, at what point will somebody say enough is enough and get the drug off the market, you know? Um, sorry, that's it's it. It's okay. For a minute, anyway. It's okay. Yeah, <sighs> Thank you.
At the inquest into John's death, the coroner returned a verdict of suicide. The fact that John had been on Roaccutane was given as evidence, but no one could say conclusively it played a part in his death. I'm back in London and I'm going to speak to the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency about Roaccutane. They are the government body that license drugs and treatments for use in the UK. The benefits of isotretinoin are that it is a highly effective treatment for severe acne that has failed to respond to other forms of treatment. And over the years, many tens of thousands of people have had effective help for very severe acne. Just last year, we carefully checked out a big Swedish study about depression which confirmed our understanding that depression is linked with a severe skin condition such as acne and it tends to get worse as the condition gets worse and the risk is there during treatment with isotretinoin but tends to reduce as treatment progresses. It's so difficult. Having bad spots can make people depressed and this drug can clear up spots. For many people it does, which of course will make them feel better there is also a small risk that it may make people feel really bad and that can be incredibly distressing for the people it does affect. I'm on my way back to Harley Street to see how Will is getting on. So I'm about to go and see Will. I'm really excited to see how it's been for him and to see his face as well. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I'm good, you. Give us a hug. It's been ages. Yeah. Wow, look at you. Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Feeling yeah. Good. yeah. So, how many treatments has it been now? Uh, seventh or eighth, carrying me. And what's it been like? Yeah, it's been good. It's yeah. Been really good. Yeah. Awesome. Your face looks really good. Thanks. Yeah. After three months, there's a real improvement in Will's skin. So far, the treatments cost £400 and he's still got a while to go, but he hasn't experienced any side effects. What kind of change have you noticed in Will? Oh, he's back to his normal, outgoing little self, you know. Um, still got his little harem of women following him <laughs> around the school now. He goes out and about more again now with his mates, you know, he'll, he'll be in and out of the house all night long, whereas before I noticed he was always in his bedroom and he started running again now and yeah, just a whole different, you know, different will. It's actually a miracle really, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely. It was a bitter cold night in Swanage when Jesse said goodbye to his friends at the East Bar. It was 1.35am when he was caught on CCTV passing the fish and chip shop. No one knows what happened next. But five days after he went missing, Derek and Patsy got a knock on the door. And by 9.30 in the morning, I think it was 9.30, we had the knock at the door that every parent dreads. And I knew instantly when I opened the door what had happened. I knew it. I knew it. And he, he said to me, um, we found a body. Well, it, um, it was horrible. Like, just got a knock on the door and I thought it was just, you know, something else. I didn't think that he'd been found or anything. So, yeah, me, me and my mum were pretty hysterical on my dad, so it was horrible. Jesse's body was found at a local beauty spot. Nobody knows how he got there. It was an awful way for the whole thing for the whole thing to end. You know, it it just it just rocked our lives totally. If, if you look at it sensibly, the acne was to blame initially. You know, his, 
his absolute self-loathing was because he had bad acne and that really affected him very, very badly. So yeah, the, ac the acne was to blame in the beginning. Mm. But then, you know, the, everything else, the drug, the Roaccutane he took, yeah, that, it all added to, I blame, I blame it all, really. What a terrible, terrible tragedy. And it happened to an amazing person who had amazing friends and a really loving, special family. It's almost unbelievable that acne has ended somebody's life in a roundabout way. There's lots of different factors, but that's where it all began. At the inquest into Jesse's death, there was no mention of Roaccutane, and because there were no witnesses to what happened the night he died, and he didn't leave a suicide note, the coroner returned an open verdict. I only received these a couple of weeks, well, a couple of days ago. Right. After meeting young people who have taken Roaccutane and heard from their families, we wanted to hear what the drug company had to say about the risks of taking their product. So this morning, Roche have agreed to have a meeting with us. Um, they will speak to me and Derek. We're both going to go in there together, but they won't allow us to take the cameras in, so we'll let you know what they say. Of the 27,500 prescriptions every year for Oaccutane, NHS figures state that one in 10,000 will experience the rare side effects of aggression, depression and suicidal thoughts. But these figures could be incorrect because some cases like Jesse's are not recorded as suicide. They admitted that the cases of suicide are probably underreported. There are a lot more than they actually get to hear yeah. about. And, um, you know, they, but they would not admit that the Roaccutane caused depression and thoughts of suicide. But at the same time, they didn't dismiss it. They didn't dismiss it. No. They went around the houses quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. But they basically say there's no causal link between Roaccutane and thoughts of suicide or depression. And that's, that's probably, you know, that's true. The, the evidence isn't there, but that doesn't mean it, it's not real. In a written statement after the meeting, Roche says the following about the link between Roaccutane and depression or suicidal thoughts. There is no evidence of a causal link between Roaccutane and depression or suicidal thoughts. However, as there have been rare reports of people getting... In the half a million courses of Roaccutane prescribed globally between September 2010 and September 2011, we were unfortunately notified of nine suicides worldwide whilst taking the treatment. This works out to just under two per 100,000. However, the rate of suicide seems... The Samaritans estimate the suicide rate amongst young men aged between 16 and 24 in the UK to be at 16 per 100,000, eight times higher than those taking Roaccutane. The day after Jesse's body was found, an unusual memorial appeared on the beach. How can you see me this is a graffiti memorial that one of Jesse's friends did for him when, he, when it was announced what had happened to Jesse. This graffiti appeared overnight. And, you know, there, there were some complaints to the local council about it. But um, the council had a debate. Yeah in the council chamber about Jess's graffiti and they decided that the gra graffiti could stay. Yeah. What does it make you guys feel when you come here? Comforting. I find it quite comforting. And a lot of his friends actually bring flowers down. I mean, they're not doing it so much now, because, you know, but they, the last year they would bring flowers down and putting them there. And Laura always says she can imagine Jess sat there looking yeah. out. So it's quite comforting to come down and, you know, sit there and sort of just feel mm. Although the graffiti memorial for Jesse will fade in time, he is remembered every year at the Swanage Carnival Talent Contest. Patsy and Derek are to present the Jesse Jones Memorial Cup. We'd like this trophy 
to go to Neil. <laughs> well done, well done, congratulations. Discovering Jessie's story and meeting people like Will and Stefan and Chloe was such a stark reminder of the huge impact acne can have on someone's life. It's just such a visible problem. It's bound to affect confidence in so many ways. On the flip side, it's incredibly common and there are brilliant treatments that work. You just need to find what's right for you. The fact that it's so common and treatable makes it all the more devastating that in rare cases like Jessie's, getting rid of the actual spots is sometimes not the end of the problem. Do you miss him? Yeah, definitely. What do you miss about him? Um, I just miss, like, joking around. Sorry. I don't know, just having, like, some, someone there, like someone else in my family, like... Because you think, like, your mum and dad kind of have each other, but then... Well, I know I have my mum and dad, but it's nice to have... Like, your big brother. 